In this episode, I want to talk about these two Alpha Server 800s. Hello viewers, welcome back to another episode and this episode is about the Alpha Server 800. Um, there was a small introduction for the intro, this is because I think maybe this is better for the YouTube algorithm, so this is the reason why I, uh, I will now say one or two sentences before the intro and then after the intro the uh, videos are as usual. But there's also one difference, you can see this video is the first video recorded at my new location and now I have a bit more space for all my stuff. Yeah, you can see here two Alpha Server 800s and um, in my Alpha introduction video I have said that um, one Alpha Server is the 400 MHz version, but this was wrong because I've started now both machines and also this machine where the batch is missing is also um, Alpha Server 800 with 500 MHz. So these two machines um, have the same processor or the same type of processor uh, but I do not really know if they are equal um, from the rest of the hardware you can see on the right machine there is one uh, device is missing I think there was a CD-ROM um, drive but I have another CD-ROM drive so we'll put a new CD-ROM drive into the machine and um, the rest of the front is quite unspectacular. Here is uh, a floppy drive and here are the buttons for reset and halt and turn it on and off. Um, so the, in general this front is quite unspectacular. So um, in this video I will show you uh, for the machine from the outside and then from the inside because uh, yeah, uh, uh, as other YouTubers said, don't turn them on, take them apart. Um, and after that uh, I will start the machines, but um, I cannot show you OpenVMS on that machine because these machines do not have any kind of hard drive and um, I made several videos about storage works and um, the storage works uh, systems uh, I have <coughs> it's planned to connect with these machines later and then integrate that into my cluster, but that's not part of that video. This video is only a hardware overview. And you can remove the cover and some of the also covers came, came off and here is another cover under it. And when you remove that, there is space for hard drives. So you can uh, put four hard drives into the machine if there is any kind of SCSI controller because there is, I think there is no onboard SCSI controller, I really don't know, but on the back there is no SCSI connector for external SCSI devices. So when we look inside, uh, maybe we see if there is any kind of SCSI controller and here on that, under that cover it's the same, there, there is uh, no hard drive as well in the machine. So that's the back of the machine with the connections, I showed only the back from one of the machines because I think this is quite equal, you can see there were some kind of other controllers installed because there is written what was there here where there was um, SCSI controller installed, HVD SCSI controller, but this is removed, but I have a new one. And these are two network cards, DE500, and this is another network card, DE450. So these are AISR or PCI, also 64 PCI bit expansion slots. We will see them later when we have a look inside the machine. And these are the normal connections. This is a deck type terminal connection but there's also a um, VA connector and two PS2 ports for keyboard and mouse. So you can use them with uh, display and keyboard and mouse or with the terminal. It depends on the configuration of the system and also on the operation system. And here are two more serial ports for modems, etc. and a parallel port because other machines uh, have a, um, a parallel port in contrast to uh, Rex machines where you normally do not find a parallel port and this is the power connection and then just there uh, the power supply. Let's have a look inside. I've opened both machines but both machines 
yeah, uh, looking quite equal inside, so you can see only one machine at the moment. And this is the inside. And I didn't know it before, there is an internal SCSI controller. So here, this is a 50 pin SCSI cable, uh, which goes to the back plane and then to that cable to connect also the SCSI uh, CD ROM drive. So um, you can uh, put a hard drive into that machine. But this is a 50 pin cable, so it's not, this, is, this isn't white SCSI, this is normal, this is normal narrow. Uh, SCSI type of connector, so it's not the fastest connection um, for hard drives. In the other machine, there's also a cage for hard drive, which is uh, in that machine, but uh, I do not want to put hard drive in it, so I really do not need it. So as you can hear, see here the uh, power supply, which the power cables, which goes to the uh, different devices here and to the backplane, and also down here, there to the motherboard. So this is the motherboard and there's also here, uh, this is also some kind of daughter board for the CPU. I will uh, take it out the machine later and uh, show you detail of that because I want to show you also the CPU. Um, and um, the rest here are the expansion slots, um, three slots uh, PCI 32-bit and one 64-bit and uh, three e ISER ports. Just some yeah, chips, Intel, and I think this Q Logic is a SCSI controller. Um, yeah, this is a chipset. So this is the, the mainboard, and here are eight slots for memory. In both servers are four memory modules. I don't know how big they are. We'll see later when we start the machine. And that is yeah, the inside of the machine. And uh, now I'll have a closer look at the CPU daughter board. So this is the CPU thought about. This is the CPU. This is uh, EV56 or uh, Alpha 21164A with 500 megahertz. So this is the biggest CPU available for the Alpha Server 800. And you can see also some kind of chipset here. So this is a digital uh, 21172BA kind of data switch. And this is uh, um, uh, 21172CA, which is part of the chipset for the I.O. control, and here are some SRAM chips. So this is the uh, content of the, uh, the daughter board, and now we remove the uh, heatsink of the processor, and fortunately I also have um, some uh, tools with uh, imperial sizes, because this is uh, digital was uh, a Merton brand, yeah, I need uh, imperial size tools. Uh, in Europe we have uh, normally metric size, but I've also got a set of uh, imperial size tools for my deck hardware. So if you uh, work with uh, uh, that kind of hardware you, and live in Europe, you need also uh, imperial tools sometimes. Yeah, and there is the CPU. You can see uh, here written is on 211.64, the A is missing, and also E56. Uh, and interestingly, the deck CPUs do not have, uh, they have these pad, and you can also you can remove the screws, and then you can easily remove the, uh, the heat the heat thing, so it's uh, quite easy to remove these things from uh, alpha CPUs. And uh, this, is, this is the CPU, it's from 1996, written over here. Um, the whole system is from 1997, so the server is really, was released in October 1997, but uh, I think the CPU is a bit older, maybe uh, it's, uh, it's copyright is from 1996, because yeah, they started to design the CPU before they can release the whole server. So the next part, next thing is to uh, put everything back together and then uh, starting uh, the machine. I put the machine back together and connected a keyboard and a normal, just a PS2 keyboard and uh, display to it with uh, VGA and also terminal because I don't know uh, which on which port we will see the output and uh, first I will test the system on the right and let's have a look, let's start the machine. It starts, I don't know if you can hear it, but I don't know if we can see anything. Mm. 
no output on the terminal. Also no output on the screen. Okay, that's the thing I have to check. Okay, now it's working. So what happened when I've put the uh, TPU daughter board back into the machine, I've banded several pins. I don't know why, because it was in the middle, not on the, on the, on the, uh, the edges, left or right, only in the middle, and uh, maybe there was some uh, plastic problem of the daughter board, and it took me more than an hour to bend them back together and do several try to put the CPU board back in the machine and uh, now it's working so everything is uh, perfectly working and, and it was complete luck that uh, none of the pins break um, so now the machine you can see it now the machine is working you can see it here um, we have uh, output on, on the VGA port and not on the terminal though the VT uh, 520 does not show anything and um, I'll go over to the uh, to the, C to the keyboard and we can let's have a look on the devices you can see there there is uh, a SCSI both 7 SCSI but internal, this is the internal SCSI card um, and the floppy disk and the Ethernet controller okay after I repaired the pins and uh, I saw that the uh, server is starting up again uh, uh, I'm still afraid that there is some kind of damage. Um, so this inserted scene you see at the moment is recorded a uh, day after the rest of the video. Um, but um, I think I will try if the machine is able to boot OpenBMS and therefore uh, I uh, take out this um, uh, storage works array and uh, I think on one of this is um, um, installed OpenBMS for Alpha. I don't know, but uh, the uh, previous owner said that there is an installation on the disks. I didn't know. You can see the disks here from 023. Uh, I really don't know which disk is the right one, but uh, I will try to boot from the disks until I've got a hit and uh, found a bootable image. Yeah, therefore, I will try now out if the machine is still able to boot, open VMS. Yeah, um, there is a boot image on the disk zero. I've tried out all three disks, uh, all four disks. But uh, I think the image on the disk zero is too old, so uh, an error. And um, uh, OpenBMS uh, versions prior to version 7.1 doesn't support the Alpha Server 800, therefore this wouldn't work. Um, so my next try is to install uh, OpenBMS on a hard drive. So I've also got a hard drive here and uh, another hard drive, which I will build into the machine. And uh, then I will try to install OpenBMS on that machine for testing purpose. Now to change the setup, I've in, um, inserted a hard drive here, 18.2 gigabyte, just for next purpose, and added a DRAM drive, plus an external one, and I will install this quite modern OpenBMS uh, version 7.3-2 from HP, so it's a quite new version, it's from 2003, um, and then I will have a look if that will work, but I will do that off camera because this is just for testing if uh, the machine is okay. I wasn't able to install um, OpenBMS for Alpha on that machine because um, the installation procedure is a bit different and uh, the system said the 
hard drive is offline, but um, this is some kind of uh, hard drive program. But I think this is a working hard drive, uh, but uh, I've on got only only one uh, hard drive here, which uh, can be uh, put into that system, and I do not want to over override the other four hard drives from storage works array uh, because um, maybe there is something on it which I have to check though um, I wasn't able to install it but the install process starts and everything is running so it's just a disk error uh, and um, yeah I think uh, I had luck that uh, there was no permanent damage uh, was done to that machine. So that machine, I think that machine is still working and uh, after I uh, put everything back together and have uh, working storage, I think that machine will work. So let's switch to the other machine. So let's start the other one, the other server. Let's have a look at the output. And in contrast to the other server, we see the output on the terminal. So the self tests are here. So it's not configured to, um, uh, to get an output on the display. It's configured to get an output on the terminal. And it is a self test and so on. Um, so you can configure a standard output on the display and you can configure a standard output on the terminal. And later I need the standard output on the terminal because I want to manage it um, with wired with, with terminals uh, or with a serial connection and that's the reason why I need terminal output um, a new um, connected terminal only to the other server you do not get any kind of output so you definitely need to uh, um, connect display and a keyboard and a mouse to the other server and this is not uh, this is not uh, necessary so we can enter show devices over here and we can see all the devices, two network cards, because uh, this machine has two network cards, and Toshiba CD-ROM CD -ROM device, and the Toshiba CD-ROM device, so um, this machine uh, does not need uh, a display. So I have to uh, reconfigure the other machine. I think the other machine is configured for Windows NT, and this machine is configured for VMS. This is the reason why there are a different kind of standard outputs. So this is the end of the hardware tour of the Alpha Server 800, um, the OpenVMS installation and the integration to the cluster. This is uh, something for further videos. So I hope you find that interesting um, and leave comments below and see you the next time and bye.